Hello there and welcome to another episode of Long Live Rock and Roll. I am Mr. Laz Michaelides, one of your co-hosts, and on the screen opposite me is your other co-host, Mr. Felipe Amarim. How are you doing, bro? How are you doing, man? I'm fine. Uh, yeah, uh, good morning. Yeah, it's good morning. A lovely morning here, so... And, What's the uh, weather like? Is it sunny where you are, or is it just a, bit, a nice... bit chilly? But it's uh, yeah, it's yeah. Is out, but it's not. No. It's a little, it's a little grey where I am, but um, at least it's not raining. I got a rugby match later on, and I just can't stand it when the ground is frozen because every time you hit the ground, it really hurts. So <laughs> I'm hoping, I'm hoping for a spot of rain just so the ground softens up a bit. But yeah, all good here. In what, the what, what, a, what a typical uh, British day for you, isn't it? It's cold and we have a rugby match. It's cold. <laughs> I have a rugby match, and just before we recorded this, I had a bacon sandwich with a cup of tea. <laughs> so, oh my god! <laughs> what, what, what more stereotypes do I have? Shall I get the bus to? rugby is that it is that another stereotype <laughs> no a, a, a bus replacement <laughs> a rail, rail replacement bus isn't it? so I'll buy a it. train ticket but actually get a bus to the rugby we were talking i was talking to my bandmates the other day about uh we were playing the song lonesome train and I said in the UK it should be called Lonesome Rail Replacement Bus. <laughs> lonesome Rail Replacement Bus. <laughs> doesn't have the same ring to it. But it no, works. but it's, it's, it speaks truth, doesn't it? Um, yeah. Anyway. So let's do, we, we're going to change to something way more American now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's it, exactly. Yeah. So as Felipe just hinted at, we are doing uh, an album today. Um, Felipe, do you want to introduce it? Because, well, you introduce oh, yeah. it and tell us about it and why you chose it. So let's talk about the band quickly. The band we're talking about is Green Day. Right? That's right. And the album is Dookie. Well, Green Day, uh, as some people might know, they were kind, kind of highly influenced by, you know, the classic punk bands like Ramones, Sex Pistols, The Clash. But they they also mentioned the Kinks and the Who as their influences, which is quite interesting, isn't it? It is, yeah. Just oh, hearing yeah. a few little pop elements in there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You have that rock and roll attitude that the who has uh, for, for sure and the one thing uh, i want to mention is people they influenced which is uh quite be might be quite shocking to some people like bands like fallout boy and blink 182 they're quite obvious yeah. they were influenced by green day you can hear it uh there's a bit of a controversy there because some people say oh but blink 182 started when green day wasn't famous yet so but they claimed they actually were taking ideas and copying riffs from them. So it's a, yeah. it's a clear influence. But Billie Eilish and Lady Gaga are amongst pop artists who mentioned Green Day as huge influences for them. Wow. So, yeah, so that means they actually crossed that line between punk and pop. And I think they did it better than anyone else. Mm-hmm. I think they actually found a place which is uh, right in the middle, but more rock and roll than pop, but still like. Uh, with all the pop melodies, with all the elements that make a a song uh, successful, they have all of that, but they're still a rock band. So yeah. the album Dookie, which initially was called Liquid Dookie, <laughs> so that took... for those who don't know, Dookie literally means excrement, so fecal matter. I'm trying to use all the scientific words, but basically poo or shit. Um, <laughs> but didn't the the record label, uh, or was it the label of themselves? They wanted to call it Liquid Dookie, which, as you Liquid can Dookie. take that, means yeah. diarrhea, so really runny poo. Um, but they decided, or someone said to them, let's just drop the liquid because this is just too obvious. <laughs> so they just stuck with Dookie. <laughs> Less gross, isn't it? Just yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah so, but go on. No, yeah, it sold 10 million copies in 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 the us and 20 millions worldwide so yeah it is a really like huge success it was green day's third album and it's got five singles uh long view welcome to paradise basket case when i come around and she mm-hmm. interesting i mean that's quite a lot of singles it is <laughs> then again there's a lot of songs on the album you know there's 15 tracks isn't there but yeah. I, I don't ever I mean, one of my one of my favorite bands, Gojira, they released, f- I think, five songs from their new album last year, and I thought that was quite a lot to do because it's almost like you're giving away half of the album before uh, you've even released it. But um, what what do you think about the the release of five singles? Was was that more in the nineties? I mean, I don't really know. I have no idea because um, back in the day when I was listening to that kind of stuff. Um, we, I don't think we had. It was more about MTV than than the radio in that sense. 
Uh, so I don't I didn't know which songs came as single. I, I I reckon everything you listen on the radio is a single, and uh, I I remember because well, I actually I, I was I didn't know about Green Day in 1994 or 95 when the album uh, came came about. Uh, I actually started listening to them around 1998, uh, but the album was like everyone was still talking about the album. You know, a few years after its release, and yeah. it was still like playing on MTV, and. Um, I'll tell you this, what I think it's cool about it. It's one of the reasons why I, I decided to do uh, a show about this album. Uh, because it's quite different from the other bands we're talking about, isn't it? It's not, we, we try to we try to uh, have all sorts of rock and roll in here. And if you're a classic rock fan, you might not like Green Day. But uh, they definitely relevant to the industry, to say the least. Absolutely. But at the time, when I listened to this, and it's one of the reasons why I think it's, it's, it's a great album, a friend of mine, well, we were into Zeppelin and Pink Floyd and Beatles and, and Deep Purple. So I wouldn't listen to Nirvana because I thought it was too simple. Right. You know, I was okay. like, which I like, I like Nirvana now. I didn't like it at the time. And and we were listening to elaborate kind of stuff, you know. But I was learning the guitar. and I obviously wasn't a guitar player. I was a drummer learning the guitar. And I struggled to play some stuff. A friend of mine came with an acoustic guitar and taught me how to play when I come around. And okay. I've learned it in a couple of minutes. Oh, the right. main riff. And I was yeah. like, oh, this is quite cool. The rhythm's cool, and it's not that one specifically. It's not too fast. There's just a few chords. And I've played it. I was like, how cool it is. And then and then he showed me how to play another Green Day song and so on and so forth. It was like, this is this is easy in a certain way. It's not when you actually play like they play, it's not easy. But to learn the, the basic riffs of a Green Day song like that from or the songs from this album. Uh, it's it's something you can do quickly. So I think it encourages people to pick a guitar and play for the first time. Was and it it's the, a it's a brilliant thing, isn't it? Was it the accessibility of not not necessarily you playing the guitar, but the accessibility of you think well actually no no, maybe yeah, I will ask that question. It was it the accessibility of you finding it easy to play the songs that actually opened that doorway to this album? Exactly. Yeah. It was like so I played when I come around. So oh, it's really cool. So I was looping. I didn't I think I didn't go beyond the, the intro riff, but I was just looping that riff. I mean, it feels good to play this. and feels yeah. good to listen to this. And it's loud guitars. And the production is amazing. You can hear everything clearly. So it's it's it's, uh, uh, it's a great album to listen to in terms of sound. So mm-hmm. I love that. And it's very simple. Guitar, bass, and drums. There's not, there's not many layers. And it's it's. I think it communicates, right? Let's put it like that. And especially if you... Uh, into just having fun, have a good time listening to music. It's it's really cool. And also, um, I think with punk rock in general, if you can call them a punk rock band, I, I think that's fair. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it sounds like for me, it's initially designed for teenagers <laughs> and young people in general because it's the, the themes around the lyrics. So for, particularly about Dookies, there's loads about boredom. And oh, I don't have a job. And my mom told me to get a job, but she doesn't like the job she's got. But well, there's that kind of stuff. And uh, and and it's like uh, life in your neighborhood, trying to connect with the girls, and the, all this, all the themes that, that they have, they are very like very much uh, related to young people's lifestyle. We uh, and, and specifically in America, of course. And I think it, that that's what those people wanted to see on telly. So when they saw the, the videos from the album, and I think it's a very, all, all the, 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 the themes in the songs are very simple, direct. Yeah. And if, if you, if you know Green Day by the stuff they did after, like in 2004, they did American Idiot, which is again, like a huge success, yeah. but that's a way more elaborate album. It's an opera rock. You know, there's a whole concept. There's like ballads. There's, there's, there's many, many layers of instruments and they can play, you know, like uh, they 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 be much better players now. I would say, but Dookie, I think, reflects a uh, a point in time where they were just uh, three uh, young American guys trying to have fun and try to actually make some money out of it. Because it sounds to me that that was intentionally uh, uh, designed to be a mainstream album. I don't think it was by chance. Yeah, no, I completely agree with that, man. I think there is a fantastic sort of balance in this album between um, pop music with uh, rock and roll instruments and then the punk attitude and musical characteristics that they had. Um, 
I'll just give you some facts about the album as usual. Uh, the name is Dookie. The artist is Green Day. It was released February 1st, 1994. Uh, recorded August to October 1993 in Fantasy Studios, California. Uh, it sits just under 40 minutes of le in length. Uh, the label was Reprise, and the producers were Green Day and Rob Cavallo. Um, and now the interesting thing is the genres, right? So they, I've seen this listed under, under three categories. Actually, we'll get rid of one, which is alt rock, because I think it is alternative rock. But that's that seems broader to me than the two main yeah. genres. The two main genres, punk rock and pop punk. So I think Ooh. the question here is to identify what's the difference. So I've done some research into this. Now, it seems to me punk rock, short, fast paced songs, stripped down instrumentation, aggressive shouting vocals, maybe if you like conversational. Yeah. Um, shouting. Now, what is pop punk? Well, it's punk rock, but with emphasis on the classical pop uh, characteristics, like verse, yeah. chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, end, you know. Um, also, adolescent themes linking more to, as you said, the kinks and the who, you know, taking yes. political themes of love and sort of stuff like that, whereas punk is very political. Uh, throughout the 70s, it was very political, wasn't it, punk, as a movement, whereas Adding the pop element to pop punk means that you can draw inspiration, as you said, from the Kinks and the Who and the Beatles and singing about love, singing about, you know, um, mental health, things like you know, everyday life, things like that, um, which I think it was really interesting um, what you just mentioned about the pop punk thing. And that they, is, uh, yeah, is, is, isn't it? Isn't it what makes them uh, different from The Clash? The Clash is much more political, isn't it? Yeah, in that sense, or, or Sex Pistols. You know, so if you listen to those guys, you can see there's a whole ideology behind it, uh, which you can hear in Green Day's music later in their career. But at this point in time, yeah, as I said, it's like, well, we're talking to young people and it's, it's you know, it's about those things in life that you need to go through when you are young. I don't know how young they were at the time. I don't know if they were that young, but, you know, they look young and they <laughs> they they play like young boys would play. And um, I did ask you to watch the video. I don't want your opinion on it, but uh, but just just yeah. a couple of more uh, interesting facts about the album. In 1995, they won the Grammy Award for Best Alternative Music Album. Yes, they did. Yeah, that's that's brilliant. That what well, like Grammy Award for a punk band? You know, so they did. So that's what again they they've been through the same thing that most uh, successful bands go through. It's like the fans said they were sold out, and like oh, they, you know, they they uh, they. Um, uh, just embracing the mainstream and doing whatever the label tells them to do. We don't like them anymore. Some fans were like that, but you know what? They needed to break it to the other level, you know, and 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 make it big. And they and they've done it. So yeah. well done. So uh, they are also mentioned the one thousand and one albums you must hear before you die, which is a great book. If you don't have it, buy it, last. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, I've seen it so many I read times. This book. And I've, I've just never got around to buying it, but um, but no, I mean to get into that a book is very it's a huge thing. So, yeah. but, you know, this was a landmark album for them. Yeah, um, yeah. this is what bought them their 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 sort of stardom and their fame and their their mainstream media presence. Um, but also, I mean, I mean, all right, give me give me a few minutes to talk about pop punk. Yeah, yeah. You alluded to it earlier with the likes of Blink-182 and Fallout Boy, but this yeah. actually did a hell of a lot more than just those bands. You've got to think that punk, you know, punk is actually one of the sort of hard rock genres that I haven't done a lot of research into and I don't really know a lot about, but I know that it was during the 70s, wasn't it, that that's when punk rose up. And yeah. started dying out in the 80s, I believe, with the with the, with the... With the rise of hair metal and glam rock and stuff like that, and grunge as well in the early nineties. Um, but this is really interesting because there was another album released this uh, released in nineteen ninety four called Smash by The Offspring, and those two albums are credited with bringing pop punk into the mainstream. And I just did a bit of research into the al debut albums um, of these bands. So just let me list them off. So uh, not not these two, but the ones coming after. Dookie and Smash, 1994. Now listen to these albums that came after that. 
Bowling for Soup, Bowling for Soup, 94. Blink 182, Cheshire Cat, 95. Weezer, Pinkerton, 96. Fountains of Wayne, Fountains of Wayne, 96. Smash right. Mouth, Fush You Mung, 97. Alien Ant Farm, Greatest Hits, 99. Newfound Glory, Nothing God Can Stay, 99. Good Charlotte, Good Charlotte, 2000. Some 41, All Killer, No Filler, 2001. Alien Ant Farm Anthology, 2001. And I'll come back to that one. Now, Busted, busted 2002 now that's significant because that is from my research the first british band that have taken that pop punk thing that was going on in america and brought it over here you've got avril lavigne let go 2002 then from that you've got likes of fallout boy billy talent my chemical romance um paramore that it just kind of expands so much from then on you know there's no there's no point trying to control it and list them after that but i just loved that you could see that progression of pop punk starting with those two albums in 94 and the reason i said i'd come back to the alien ant farm one is because what I found really interesting is Alien Ant Farm in 2001 released the album Anthology and it had a cover on it. Do you know the cover? Do you know the song? No. Smooth no. Criminal by Michael Jackson. <laughs> really, a really fantastic cover. As usual, guys, the whole album will be in the playlist at the bottom of the show notes and any other songs you mention will be in. I'll stick a song or two from all of these bands I've mentioned into that so you can hear this progression. But I thought it was really interesting that well, when you listen to the song, Felipe, you're going to hear tonally, in, instrumentally, tonally, and even the way he sings, it should be you could almost class it as metal. And as this was released in 2001, you've got new metal happening. You've got Slipknot, you've got Korn, you've got Limp Bizkit, you've got System of a Down. These are all happening. And a, a common sort of trait between those bands is the conversational rapping style of vocals in, in this rising new metal. And when I say new, I mean N-U hyphen metal. Um, and the whole reason I'm saying this is because everything about the cover of Smooth Criminal sounds metal. What's the one difference? It's not a metal song they're covering. It's a pop song. And that's what I thought was really fascinating is that you've got this. Why is it appropriate to put Alien Ant Farm in a group of pop punk bands? Well, because are they telling us very obviously, although we sound a bit heavy metal and we sound a bit hard rock, that's not our influence. Let's show you our influence by doing a cover of the King of Pop, Michael Jackson. (laughs) <laughs> and and obviously you have elements of Green Day there if they are if they are um you know somehow uh, doing a pop song in a rock way. I I don't know. It's, it's, yeah. So that's that I think that's the legacy of Dookie, isn't it? Like how, how many how many bands took the same route or maybe they were doing that but they had no space in the media. Uh, you know, like maybe turn, they brought the attention to these exactly bands. turning rock into pop or pop into rock, which is very clear with Smooth Criminal, as you said, like is it was a yeah. pop song, but we're doing it in a rock and roll way because you can have that's a, another another thing about the musical freedom of rock and roll. Why not? Why can't yes, you exactly. enjoy yeah. pop music? And that's why uh, uh, I, I I think I can safely claim that that Lady Gaga has a rock and roll attitude. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know, I, I love her stage persona and everything she does. Not, uh, uh, I don't listen to that kind of music very often. I think still think she's brilliant. She writes great songs, but it's not the kind of music I listen to. But can you I just, can, can see I just quickly, that she's got loads of punk in her. I was just going to say, can I quickly just add that you? There's yeah. something important you said there. She writes her own songs. Yeah, she does, and, that, and that's yeah, which in the pop industry pop people don't in this do. day and age. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. So, yeah, because th- that's the thing about rock is it's usually true. It's usually something that comes from you. It's not someone, some producer, some uh, uh, songwriter yeah. telling you what you should pretend to be feeling. That's like part exactly. of the punk attitude. And and um, and we do associate this like uh, uh, um, ideologically or something or, or, or philosophically. We associate punk with attitude, and that's that is like one word for punk would be attitude. And I think uh, musically, and I just, I, I was just thinking about this whilst you were, you were listing all those bands and I was thinking about Dookie as well. It's like, uh, if I could define punk in one word musically, I would say pace. Is that yeah. pace, it's like, it's intense. They don't yeah. drop the ball. It's like, it's just keep going, keep going. It's fast, it's intense. All the way. So this album, most songs, like 
it's it's ridiculous. It goes for like a, a minute and a half to two and a half minutes, and it, it it's just that it doesn't. There's there, there might be one or two songs that are over three minutes, and it's like uh, fourteen songs plus one yeah. hidden track. Yeah. In, and it doesn't get to 40 minutes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's punk. Actually, shall we do a segment? It, go on, introduce it. How rock and roll is that? How rock and roll it is to release an album with a title that refers to diarrhea <laughs> because you're eating too much fast food on tour. <laughs> And it's got 14 tracks, and it lasts less than 40 minutes. Well, um, well, I think I'd, I'd have given it something like a low 80s score, but the fact of the matter is, is that, as you mentioned, the importance of the fact that they, they, they didn't call it Dookie because they've been eating fast food too much, and, oh, that, let's just call our, our album that to be different. That's a theme of the album, boredom, um, anxiety, not enjoying being with other people, staying in your own house. So the fact that they've they've <laughs> they've established and included the, the theme of the title into all of the lyrics <laughs> of the songs, and now adding and factoring in that there are 14 songs that don't take more than 40 minutes to hear and are good and are accessible and have great choruses and have great hooks this is 95 i'm happy with that i know that's a very <laughs> nice score but that is it's, rock and roll it's, fuck. It's, it's, isn't it it's exactly rock and roll. i think they would get a solid 99 if they had used the liquid dookie as a name <laughs> uh, yeah. Just well, see that pun not intended solid and liquid liquid in the same phrase but yeah. you know. yeah. uh yeah uh oh, but, but it's, yeah, it's, I mean, yeah. No, I was just going to say um, that we, so surrounding the lyrical content, I found it really interesting because, again, in this in this um, in the same vein of what I was talking about, the rise of the pop punk throughout the late nineties. If you listen to the lyrics of some of, some of those bands, um, you'll notice they're all very down to earth. They're they're about parties. It's about skating. It's about high school. It's about you know. I'm thinking of that song. Um, Stacy's mum by Fountains of Wayne, you know, it's about yeah. your, your, your friend's mum being really hot. It's just, it's normal everyday life stuff. But listen, actually, I wonder if Green Day, you know, because the, the themes of this album, um, I've got them written here, some of the themes, boredom, anxiety, relationships, panic attacks, masturbation, divorce, sexuality. These are normal everyday subjects now but I wonder back in the 90s if they were kind of like a bit taboo, a bit like, oh, hold on, we can't actually I think talk to, about this. Well, I think to speak about those things clearly, right, yeah. uh, using the, the exact words for whatever they want to say, that's that's punk. You yeah. Know? So, you know, yeah. I'm going to talk about shit, I'm going to write the word shit. So yeah. it's, you know, so it, it it's, uh, um, they not, they not, hiding the theme somewhere in the lyrics is all in your face i like that so and because I, I, also yeah. if you need to express yourself in a minute and a half you're gonna go straight to the point and that's that's the, exactly. that's what's brilliant about <laughs> punk music you know it's yeah. the opposite of prog rock <laughs> <laughs> yeah but I, I wonder if the the freedom that they expressed in the lyrics of this album then opened it up for other bands like i said to talk about being attracted to friends 40 year old well, about high school parties where you're taking drugs and drinking skating in the park you know just everyday life if, things that might be a bit might have been a bit taboo or not okay to speak of in the late 90s but then you do that and you sell 20 million copies and then the whole world knows that it's okay to you know talk about these speak things. your mind like that yeah. be loud and, when, and clear about that but because you know again rock and roll you can talk about whatever you want to talk about it doesn't need to be political it doesn't need to be serious it doesn't need to be well uh important let's put it like that you yeah. know quotation it's uh, like we said dark side of the moon didn't we that actually roger waters was addressing the issues that people weren't willing to talk about yeah exactly and it's like let, let's let's talk about the how hard it is to connect with another human being or whatever that and and in a certain way Dookie does the same job, but in a in a much more uh, teenage way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I, 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 listen, do you know what I think? Talking about l lyrics, I mean, Basket Case, the very first verse of the song, 
I think it's it sums up the album, my opinion. Give, give it to us. Tell us the first verse. Yeah. Do you have the time to listen to me whine about nothing and everything all at once? It's very teenage, isn't it? Very teenage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So he's just he's whining about stuff. But you know, yeah. whine is but do you have the time to listen to me while whilst I do it? Because that is like that's what that's what they do. For 30 something minutes of your life, you're gonna listen to uh, Billy Joe Armstrong whining about his personal stuff. But then you think, well, how many people could relate to that? You know, it's not it's not only his life. I like the everything and nothing all at once, which means that, you know, this is everything to me. I'm whining about everything that matters to me. And maybe not, maybe this is nothing to you, but at yeah. once I'm still whining to you about it. And although it's everything and nothing, it comes together to be this one entity whilst I'm presenting it and whining to you. Exactly. And then you have them doing this on a, this famous MTV video. Like there's a video clip on MTV. Uh, you got You got the line, Am I just paranoid or am I just stoned? <laughs> so <laughs> so you, you sing that on MTV 1994 yeah. to millions and millions of people and the video. What do you think about the video? Come on. I love I'll it. I ask you to watch it. <laughs> it's a parody. Uh, just so you know, I mean, I think you, you said it to me. You you said you thought I was shocked when you, when you, and you, when we were talking the other week, you said you thought I might not like this. But I listened to Green Day. American Idiot was fantastic. And this was a song I've played at loads of functions. Isn't that weird as well? I played it at yeah. nearly every function um, of the last few years. What a weird song to play at a function that's normally a wedding. Um, but anyway, um, <laughs> yes, yeah, so I actually like Green Day, man. I've watched this video hundreds of times. Well, maybe not that many. But I watched it again in case I was missing something this morning. And it is really good. And it's I get the feeling it's based off my favorite movie of all time, by the way, my favourite movies of all time are The Lord of the Rings, but I kind of put them to the side because they're just an entity in themselves. But my favourite movie of all time is One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Have you seen it? Ah, uh, yes, I have. Yeah, my favourite yeah. movie of all time. And it's just so obvious that they're kind of referencing that here, and I love it. But it's very cool because... That movie is insane. The movie is insane. Intended. And I think the video um, for Basket Case is as insane in a really good way because it's almost like... This teenager inside the band, as you mentioned, is trying to break out. He wants, you know, he's trying to break out. And But you've got the nurses putting the bass player in position, wheeling the drummer up to the drums. And it's like halfway through the song, you feel like they're actually free from all these people holding them down. And then at the very end, the door closes on them again. It's really kind of, I don't, I, I've never watched it with as much, um, what am I trying to say, um, thought as I did this morning uh, in sort of analysing the video and, and what it stands for. But yeah, that, that's that thing right at the end where the door closes on them. This morning, I was just like, shit. Like, that's that's, 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 that's really heavy, powerful. isn't it? It's yeah. heavy. Yeah, and it's it's fun. If you look at it under a um, like very uh, superficial uh, uh, point of view, it's like, yeah, it's it, it's just fun. It's really fun yeah. and it's hilarious, you know. And but cool. But if you, if you think about the meanings of it, you you yeah. locked up in your own mind. There's one. Uh, uh, there's one part of the the song. She. I love the lyrics here, man. The, uh, it says, "Are you locked up in a world that's being planned out for you? Are you feeling like a social tool without a use?" So that is very philosophical in that sense. Yeah. You know, it, although the the album can be seen as a very light approach to stuff and very like uh, just just taking the piss but this is very serious shit isn't it <laughs> That's I, think, like... I think it's great to hear lyrics that are philosophical like that but then also lyrics that are straight to the point like am i just paranoid yeah. or am i stoned it's like <laughs> yeah. fantastic weighing up the ambiguity between them yeah yeah, it's yeah. That's that's it. I think the, the lyrics are a, a big part of it, and, um, I, and I think they're the biggest because the music is simple. And this is the thing: I kind of came into the episode today knowing that we weren't going to go song by song because that's too many songs. All very similar, <laughs> would you say? It's too many songs. Yeah, well, that as well. But the the songs are very similar. You could say to me, "Do you uh, do you know that part in uh, Coming Clean?" And I'll be like, "No." Because the songs, <laughs> but, the, but that's not a bad thing because the songs are very similar. They're very short. They kind of make one make their way one into the other. Um, I do have favourites, which we'll do, we'll do a little segment later on that. Um, yeah. But they all just sound very similar, and that's not a negative thing at all. Because but but what that what that does is that if you have songs where the music is similar in terms of length, instrumentation, type of guitar riff, 
uh, bass leading the way on some of the songs. If you have this kind of similar cohesion musically, then what that allows is the lyrics to take the center stage, and I think they do in this album. Yeah, you can you can see it in 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 two uh, in two ways. One is that you can say, well, it's repetitive; they're using the same formula for every song. The other the other thing you can say is, well, the album actually has one main characteristic. Yeah. So I I, I it, it's a uh, I kind of like when the album has songs that don't seem to be related at all. They just like each song is a story. Yeah. But in this in this case, I think it's equally as remarkable that you can do a whole album with the same pace. As I said, there's a yeah. that intense like up tempo thing, start to finish, with the same vibe, the same style all the way, and still deliver that with quality overall. And here's the thing. Uh, Punk is usually uh, um, famous for for being badly played. Yeah, people say that quite a lot. You know, if you can't play anything, just go and play punk. And yeah. the Ramones uh, 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 famous famously said that they they tried to play the Beatles songs so they couldn't. They started writing their own. So uh, <laughs> so that is the essence of punk. You know, you yeah. don't need to be a great musician to the. Having said that, how good is the musicianship in this album? Everything is simple. But well executed. It's not yeah. like guitar solos and stuff, you know. But everything there, you know, it's well played. And and the I think the drumming is insane. Is yeah. really good. I was like all those that. fast is. drum fills, uh, uh, like very. Uh, 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 basically, it hits the drums really hard, but with technique, sounds clear. Sounds uh, uh, yeah. like really. Uh, uh, on the beat all the time, really cool. And it's, there's some there's some cool transitions and loads of uh, drums and bass breaks. I was just going to say that. that's yeah. one big thing about the you've album. Got, you've got some, yeah. You've got a uh, bass break in Chump. You've got bass intro of Longview. Bass break in Welcome to Paradise. Interestingly, though, in that song, it's very dissonant. That thing, which is which yeah. wasn't throughout the whole album. There wasn't much dissonance at all. Which I thought. Thinking about the lyrical content, it was very interesting that there was actually no, or not no minor chords, because there were, but yeah, let's stick with what I said, dissonance. You know, you're talking yeah. about issues with mental health and boredom and anxiety and panic attacks, and you make an album that actually sounds very agreeable to, to on you know, for 99% of the time. Um, then you've got the bass intro to She. Um, I thought it was, and that's become a... She's sig- brilliant, isn't it? That? Oh, sig- Drum, sig- drums, bass, and vocals. Yeah. That's 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 awesome. This know? went on to sort of solidify the Green Day sound, didn't it? Because they put a lot of break, bass breaks in their songs. like just. I wonder, I wonder how many people wanted to be bass players after listening to Dookie. Good because point. the sound, yeah. the bass is very aggressive. Does it play with a plectrum most of the he time? Does, it does, yeah. He's, like... a, he's, a, he's a very aggressive plectrum player. Um, uh, but you know, it's, it's little things like in Basket Case, you know, when the drums come in, uh, when I, dun, 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 and then the main riff, dun, 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 the bass does a little doo-doo. Tiny oh, little melodic that. phrases <laughs> like that that just weren't really prevalent in punk or rock for a bass to go way up the high end and just do a little do a little melodic thing to complement the guitar very very um i don't want to say innovative because i'm sure it's been done before but for this kind of music for this pop punk to give yeah. to give a bass it listen it's three notes do 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 but to give it that that to, to shine the spotlight on it for the one second that you could hear it I just found it really interesting. And then, like as we mentioned before, all the bass intros and bass breaks, we're actually shining a light on the bass guitar. Yeah, exactly. And they, they those sections alone, they are like brilliant when they, when you have just drums and bass. You have like from the third to the fourth track, jump into long view. So long view, if you just listen to the track, you, you can hear this like drum, it's a tribal kind of vibe on, on the toms and and um there's a drum intro and drum and bass, right? And the, yeah. the bass is kind of playing the main riff without without guitar. It's just them there doing that. But that comes from the previous song. There's a transition. So that shows their musicianship again. So punk yeah. bands normally wouldn't do that. So there's there's that transition from one song to another. It's well thought, uh, it's well designed. Obviously, there's always a, a probably a touch of the producer on that. But the thing is, they could execute it. They could play it. I yeah. wonder if they played the, the whole rhythmic uh, parts like live because it sounds like so i don't know i don't i don't have that information but that is live but it's it's but it's it sounds live but the quality of their playing 
also could yeah. tell me that it might not be live. Do you know what I mean? Like it's so- exactly yeah. The it's overall so vibe is live, but if you isolate it, you think, my God, he's playing bass so well and so precisely that I'd imagine it would have been him sitting alone in the studio with headphones. I hope I'm wrong because it has yeah. a fantastic live sound, doesn't it? It does. It does have a live vibe. And and, and uh, the thing with uh, Billy Joe Armstrong as a songwriter is like, I think he was very comfortable in, in the position of band lead songwriter. It didn't want to be recognized as a guitar player so look at look at me playing the guitar or doing something uh interesting uh, i would dare to say that the riffs and the melodies and the uh, uh, uh the lyrics are brilliant but it's a punk band where bass and drums somehow overpower the the importance of the guitar which which yeah is, that's I a really know. good point it, yeah i mean there are obviously some songs where um you know the guitar takes a lead riff and then the bass and drums come in after but then yeah, but there's there's always a moment like the songs i i, I actually i got uh, I, I need to even check my notes to confirm this like the songs that have drum breaks or drums and bass like without it. guitar or, or or the guitar doing very little you have that on the first track burnout yeah uh at the end there's like it sounds like a, a short drum solo it's really I cool that, yeah drum solos track, and stops I mean, yeah that's the song that sets the pace for the album it's loud distorted fast and like flat dynamics which yeah. which means like they don't go up and down it's 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 loud 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 all yeah. the way it's brilliant and then uh um so you have again well, the jump into long view same thing you have a bit a bit of, of um uh, uh instrumental drum and bass section in welcome to paradise as well yeah you have that well, so many songs well let's not forget the iconic yeah. drum fill in basket case um oh man that just, feel. which is <laughs> Let me tell you what's crazy about that, in my opinion, is that it happens in a chorus. Yeah. Sometimes I, uh, you know, I'll keep standing up. I'll ding, 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 ding. Every During chorus. the vocals. Yeah. And it's, yeah. <laughs> and it's kind of, it's, it's okay. <laughs> Anyone who's, who's ever been to a music studio recording for someone, number one thing a producer would say to a drummer is don't play fills over the vocals. <laughs> but then, <laughs> But then that's rock and roll. It is. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you another thing that all of the songs had, and this is probably connecting it more to the pop side than the punk side, is how fantastic all the choruses were. Yeah, all of them. Yeah, all of them. All Throw of the them. Whole album, and that's yeah. why I, uh, I tell you quickly, my, my what I would normally think about bands like Green Day, Blink One Eight Two, all the bands I mentioned earlier. They have single songs that I like a lot that I put, you know, I've got, I've actually got a playlist that I called skate rock or skate punk where all of my favorite songs from all of these bands are in the playlist. And you're talking maybe two, three or four songs from each band, not whole albums at all, because I kind of find that it all ends up being a little too similar. But with this album, it is all similar as we mentioned before, but the fantastic songwriting of the choruses means that although the verse might sound similar from track two to six and eight to 11, the chorus is what sets it apart because they're, they're, they're all so unique and special. Yeah, exactly. And and if for anyone who is a big fan of like those songs, like uh, when September ends and, um, and all, all the, all the more elaborate stuff they did after uh, if it wasn't for this album, they wouldn't have the name, the reputation, the money, and yeah. the time to go there and do it. And also, they wouldn't have the uh, songwriting ability. I think, I think uh, uh, Billy Joe was was uh, uh, challenging himself a lot with like songwriting and trying to 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 write to the highest level of this album. And he did a fantastic job. Uh, the the last song in the album, I mean, not not including all by myself, which is a kind of a, a joke at the end, isn't it? It's a hidden yeah. song. So FOD. Um wait, sorry. It's actually no go on, go on with FOD. Yeah, yeah on. because that's 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 uh there is a formula there that they actually use later. So it starts as an acoustic number, right? Yes. And and then the band around the the, the actually after half of the song. Uh, it's more the like three quarters of the way in. Yeah, it's more like there's only like forty seconds left. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ready. Yes, right. Yes, yeah, like the last third of the song. Yeah. you have a bit of, but that's that. That was like, uh, uh, um, you know, 
a punk singer with a, an acoustic guitar saying, what if I do an acoustic song? Yeah. You know, and then he did that many times after this. You know, I did question so the use and the need of the acoustic guitar on this track because it kind of... He plays as if it was designed to be a... Uh, uh, guitar, electric guitar song. Exactly, yeah, which I just found yeah. odd because it's like you're on the last song of the album, you've been going so well in this attitude and dynamics of these loud guitars. It wasn't bad by any means. I, it was actually, do you know what, thinking about it, I suppose it was a nice change of pace. Um, yeah. Well, not pace because the tempo is still there, but a nice sort of change of texture in terms of instruments. But um, odd. Yeah, because he's, he's, he's playing power acoustic. chords. He's playing yeah. power chords, which people don't usually yeah. play on guitar. You know, it's like the two, three note chords that sound aggressive, and they obviously don't sound that aggressive. No, it's not electric. Yeah, but, odd. not not bad. Yeah. It's just different. But that it? that's punk, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you yeah. Do whatever. You know. I was going to say. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to talk about not all by myself, not um, not in any sort of musical depth, but the song was written and performed by the drummer, right? Yeah. yeah. And I just want to talk about the drummer's name because his name is Trey Cool, isn't it? But it's not his proper name. That's his stage <laughs> of name. Course, yeah. And do you know that Trey in French means very? So All right. Very cool. I know. Very cool. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to bring attention to that. Très, très cool. Uh, très cool. Thing, uh, they might say in France. Um, what's, what's your name? My name is very cool. My name is very cool, yeah. yeah. Um, bro, is there anything else you wanted to touch on on individual songs or anything? Man, it's, yeah, it's just, I think I think I pretty much said everything I wanted to say, but yeah. uh, it, it's just, um, I, it, I think it's 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 kind of a. Uh, we talked so much about the legacy of this album, isn't it? So I think that is, uh, if you listen to this album at this point in time, you might not even realize how much, a modern music came out of this. Yeah, you know? do you know? I think another thing to discuss quickly. Um, is the production of it because if you're comparing it to punk and punk is very very the, uh, a staple characteristic of punk is raw production where basically put the band in a garage hit record let them do their thing no edits no overdubs no this no that um, and that's kind of how you then I'm not saying no punk band has ever done over has ever not done overdubs but uh, just just trying to get that aggression and that raw sound from a punk band is how it was normally. But this is quite a produced album and not overproduced and not polished, not loads of effects here and there, but it sounds tight, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It does. So the production is a big thing. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that that, that that makes it interesting is the album cover, which is for me, is brilliant. That's yes. one, one of the things at the time, because I saw it first on CD, even on CD, not being big as, as a uh, vinyl album would be. So you, if you just look at the, um, the, the, the CD cover and it was probably mainly released on CD at the time because 1994 yeah. uh, you know CD was taken over since uh, the late 80s since like 88, 89 but yeah so uh, I saw the, the cover and it, you can spend hours and hours staring at the cover trying to find details here there so you have uh, cool. dogs and monkeys throwing poo on people you have <laughs> God up in the clouds and I guess so many uh, details dogs uh, 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 also uh, flying airplanes and dropping bombs and stuff <laughs> and uh, yeah and I think they got a local artist one of their friends who is also a musician I guess and, and he designed the cover uh, don't, I forgot sorry I forgot to have his name here but if we can you know put something on the notes after yeah. about it yeah and I just want to say a couple of things that I, I I'm always like scrolling through my notes when we do it because I don't want to forget to say some stuff and my notes about this are quite funny uh, what, I, what I've written about when I come around makes me want to buy a guitar <laughs> <laughs> what I've written about uh, uh, uh basket case makes me want to break all my guitars and drums and set fire to my bed so it's like <laughs> so they should have put when i come around ahead of basket case because yeah, you're buying the, the guitar, guitar and then, you then, you, the guitar. <laughs> then you break it yeah exactly it's like, no, um, i think it's a really really good album i mean i'll do my las monologue after but we'll do oh, a quick yeah. segment um yes. this is las and felipe's top three So Felipe, tell me your top three songs of the album, please. What are your favourites? Wow, that is a, that is a difficult one. I think I'm I'm going to go for the singles. I'll be honest with you because okay. I I liked uh, uh, I didn't know Long View was a single because I didn't watch it at the time. Uh, but that's not that's going to be the third one for okay. me. And oh man, because of my uh, it, 
it would be oh man that's that's difficult number two Jesus, that's a difficult, that's a really difficult call now. I normally so, like, message love, him, guys, just so you know, I normally message him is, saying, do your top okay. three, I forgot this morning, so I have no, to do no, it on the That's spot. actually good to do <laughs> on the spot. Uh, she or when I come around, that's, I'll go for when I come around uh, as the second one in basket case is the first one. So yeah, very obvious choices. Well, I think but, I think yeah, no, but it doesn't matter. They're all good songs in the same vein, aren't they? I think you could have had any fourteen of those songs and sort of you know yeah. done them. They were they were really good. Yeah. For me, my third favorite track is "She," my second favorite track is "Burnout," and my favorite track is "When I Come Around," because I love the I, I just love that riff. That dun da ka da da ka dun da ka da da ka dun dun. Down. It's very. It's almost kind of. It's almost got a metal vibe about it, isn't it? it? Is, and it's probably like a ballad. Is, isn't it probably the lowest song in the album? Probably, it? but it's got yeah. like a hard rock, heavy metal riff over a soft song. That's <laughs> just brilliant. Like it is brilliant, and, and, and the way they build up for the chorus, the pre-chorus of that short stop. Yeah, and then. Yeah. Yeah, when I come around. <laughs> exactly. really we're singing cool. along. <laughs> it's, it makes you sing along. Uh, just one, one more thing that I didn't mention so far, which there's loads of vocal harmonies. I mean, I mean not loads, but there's, there's some interesting vocal harmonies. I believe the bass player, what's his name, is 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 Mike the, Dunt. The, Yeah, he does some some BVs, and, and, it, and it's very tasteful where they choose to put them because it's not throughout the whole of the album, is it? No, no, no. Here and there, if they, every time the the, 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 the harmonies come, things and that's also not so punk. That's more pop yeah. punk, isn't right, it? Yeah. Excellent, uh, right? Um, well, I will yeah. finish off with my my last monologue. Yo, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing it. Come Excellent, on. right? Well, here we go. Um, I think the album and the songs have a really agreeable sound, um, which could be what distinguishes it from pop, from punk to pop punk. And when I say agreeable, I kind of mean consonant sounding melodies and motifs, sing along verses and choruses that generally sort of appeal to more people than the bluntness, aggression and straightforwardness of pure punk. Lyrically, the lazy attitude of the album, I think, is a breath of fresh air and quite unique because the talks of boredom, channel hopping on TV, masturbation and other sort of day to day mundane subjects seem to have paved the way for the rise of skate rock and pop punk, as we mentioned earlier, to sing about more down to earth stuff like parties, high school, drugs, skateboarding, etc., as opposed to something which we actually haven't spoken about, which is the philosophical and depressing side that grunge was doing at the same time and the political stuff that earlier punk was singing about. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there is a very definitive path, in my opinion, for punk in the mainstream that came after this. Green Day and The Offspring led into Blink-182, Weezer, Bowling for Soup, which led into Fountains of Wayne, Smash Mouth, Alien Ant Farm and New Found Glory, which led into Sum 41, Good Charlotte, Avril Lavigne, who then went into that broader, broader spectrum we were talking about, Fall Out Boy, Chemical Romance, Billy Talent, Paramore. And I think it's obvious from that path how important it was. And the reason for that importance is because I think with grunge taking things more seriously, in terms of music and lyrics, it seems like Green Day and Dookie were playing the other side of this hard rock coin, so to speak, and they provided the audiences with the relief and easygoingness that they needed from listening to the seriousness of grunge. And it's been the biggest and most pleasant surprise of the year. So I thank you for choosing this album, Felipe, because I find that with bands like this, I tend to enjoy one song here, one song there, as opposed to whole albums. But the overarching lyrical theme of this album has made the whole experience really enjoyable. And it's an album that I will definitely go back to and listen to again and again. So thank you, bro. Oh, that was that was one of your best monologues. Really cool. Thank you. I just, <laughs> I, 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 I just, I just want to say uh, uh, regarding listening to an album, but I think one of the main messages I I would like to uh, 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 deliver with this podcast is listen to albums, start to finish. Yeah, there's, a, there, there's artists out there uh, creating a whole piece of art. It's not like it's just like uh, you know the radios and and MTV and all the stuff. Like, it's all about singles. But yeah. someone has written an album, and you can be surprised. And also, if you find the time in your life to listen to one good album a week and actually listen to it start to finish, 
you can really get away from all the messiness in the world and stuff yeah. like that. No, and, I'm so and, guilty of that. I'm so guilty of that, especially yeah. of bands where I like one or two songs. I always want to go and check it out. But then I know the songs that I love from them, and I feel like I might be might be disappointed. So then I just go and put on Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath, or And Justice for All albums that I know I love from start to finish. So I'm as guilty as that as anyone. I really do need to give uh, bands like this, especially because those bands, Blink One Eight Two, Weezer, they have some great songs, and I feel like I, I really uh, and Green Day of all of them, you know, like I love yeah. the singles off American Idiot. Yeah, I've only listened to the album in full once or twice, and I feel like it. Yeah. Disappears. More. And I, I think we live in such a visual world now. And uh, but on, on the, at the same time, so many podcasts are starting like all over the world. So so many people actually investing time to to put podcasts like ours uh, together. And it's it, it does show you that maybe we're a bit saturated with visual information. We want to listen to stuff. So listening yeah. to albums is a well, great it's, escape. It's a great escape so from reality. There, it? Yeah. Yeah, and it's like stop and listen to a whole album. Close your eyes, enjoy yeah. the experience. Do that maybe once every two days if you don't have the time. Once a week if you don't have the time, but do it, and then you're going to see how much you can escape from reality and go back to your normal life with a lot more energy and, and enthusiasm. I think that's, 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 that's a great. Yeah, that's a great point, bro. Because we're sometimes so caught up in the busyness of our lives with work, personal relationships, family and friends, you know, even just trying to get by the week to pay your rent and your bills, you know, it, it can be a struggle. So to put aside time to to, to listen to a whole album can, um, yeah, it can be hard. But sometimes, especially with this album, I'm sure with many others out there, the um, the rewards are worth it, aren't they? Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. So, yeah, thank you for joining us for the, for the first show of 2023. Um, and and please download, like, share, comment, all the stuff, all the online interactions, because that helps with the algorithms or whatever whatever they're doing. Absolutely. To, yeah, uh, yeah, to make in, us uh, stand out in this world of podcasts. That's right. Yeah, we're an independent podcast. You know, we don't have any backing. Um, we just do this for the for, for the love of what we do. You know, each album we yeah. talk, each album we discuss. You know, it has something there. And there's been albums I haven't liked or, and won't listen to again, but it's been so worthwhile doing it just to explore uh, the fantastic, rich history of, uh, of rock and roll. So yeah, thank you once again for joining us. Yes, and um, thanks everyone for being with us once again. Keep on rocking, everyone. And as you guys take care, Happy New Year, and long live rock and roll. <laughs>